NASA's new moon rocket makes its debut next week. The space launch system is shorter and slimmer than the Saturn V rockets that hurled Apollo astronauts to the moon. But it is mightier, packing 8.8 .8 million pounds of thrust. NASA's new moon rocket makes its debut next week in a high-stakes test flight before astronauts get on top. The 322-foot rocket will attempt to send an empty crew capsule into the far-flung lunar orbit. If all goes well, astronauts could strap in as soon as 2024. Liftoff from Florida's Kennedy Space Center is set for August 29th. The Orion capsule on Artemis 1 is going to be leaving Earth. It's going to uh, go to the moon and circle, use the gravitational pull of the moon. And then Artemis 2 is going to have two astronauts on, on the Orion capsule. And at that point, when it goes around the moon, it'll be the deepest in space that any humans have ever been uh, in, in history. And so that's going to create history. And then, of course, Artemis 3 is going to have astronauts that are going to actually uh, put their boots on the, on the moon's surface again. It will be NASA's first human-capable moonshot in half a century, years behind schedule and billions over budget. The price tag for the single mission exceeds $4 billion. The entire program will have set NASA back $93 billion by the time astronauts are back on the moon. The new rocket is shorter and slimmer than the Saturn V rockets that hurled 24 Apollo astronauts to the moon a half century ago. But it's mightier, packing 8.8 .8 million pounds of thrust. Future versions of what's called the Space Launch System rocket, SLS for short, will be even bigger. Unlike the streamlined Saturn V, the new rocket has a pair of strap-on boosters refashioned from NASA Space Shuttles. Boosters will peel away after two minutes, just like the shuttle boosters did, but won't be fished from the Atlantic for reuse. The core stage will keep firing before separating and crashing into the Pacific in pieces. Two hours after liftoff, if all goes well, an upper stage will then send the capsule Orion racing towards the moon. Uh, there's liquid hydrogen uh, and liquid oxygen. Uh, it's both cryogenics. When they come into the main combustion chamber, they immediately go to plus 6,000 degrees Fahrenheit and they come out at Mach 13, 13 times the speed of sound as the exhaust. That is, would take you from New York City to LA in less than 15 minutes. The B-2 test stand at Stennis Space Center was built in the 1960s to test the Saturn V rocket stages that carried humans to the moon. It was modified to test the SLS core stages. It's awesome to see that being tested, you know. It's a very robust engine, but then seeing how they're maturing it even more with getting rid of traditional manufacturing techniques and going and looking at that, you know, coming up with new electronics for it. It's just awesome to see the whole landscape, you know. We're very fortunate here. You know, we've got gas turbine engines over there with Rolls-Royce. We've got high pressure stuff. We've got commercial, we've got government. We've got all kinds of stuff going on. And, you know, this is kind of an epicenter of doing that, which is awesome to see. More than 50 years later, Apollo still stands as NASA's greatest achievement. Using 1960s technology, NASA took eight years to go from launching its first astronaut, Alan Shepard, and landing Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin on the moon. By contrast, Artemis has already dragged on for more than a decade despite building on the short-lived Moon Exploration Program constellation. Twelve Apollo astronauts walked on the moon from 1969 through 1972, staying no longer than three days at a time. For Artemis, NASA will be drawing from a diverse astronaut pool currently numbering 42 and is extending the time crews will spend on the moon to at least a week. The goal is to create a long-term lunar presence that will grease the skids for sending people to Mars. Bureau report me on World is One.